Um, so I can go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Leela McKay and I've been working as a special projects assistant with Career Space for about a year now running events just like this one and to just help connect students with different opportunities that they um, either might think of themselves or that they um, are interested in learning more about. So if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, Karen. Sure, and I'm Karen Foster. I'm the enrollment advisor for the nursing program and um, I represent the all the streams of nursing for admissions. So at Peterborough campus, we have the two streams collaborative and compressed. And then we offer a post practical nursing bridge program with George Brown. Um, but I would imagine anybody that's here today was probably interested in what we offer at the Peterborough campus. Uh, so um, I love this tagline from the nursing um, department, inspiring nursing as if every person matters. I think it really speaks to the nature of the nursing program at Trent. Uh, nursing, concern for nursing to marginalized populations, um, graduating nursing students that are advocates in the healthcare setting. Uh, these are some of the things that are uh, important in the, uh, in the nursing program. So just to let you know, I'll just go through this slideshow briefly and then I'm happy to answer questions at the end and my contact information will also be at the end. Um, so I'll skip this part. So one of the things about the Trent program is that it is a fully integrated partnership with Fleming College. Um, and so that just means that um, teaching faculty are represented by Trent University and Fleming College, so half and half. Um, you don't have to do any studies at Fleming, everything happens at the Trent campus. Um, but Fleming faculty teach and have offices on the Peterborough campus. Um, we have reached the maximum accreditation from the Canadian Association of Schools of Nursing, so you know that you are an accredited and quality program. As I alluded to earlier, the program has a commitment to advocacy and social justice. Um, Nursing programs in Ontario graduate generalist nurses. So you don't sort of become a specific nurse, nurse when you graduate from any program. You get exposure to the many areas of nursing. Um, however, at Trent, we do have focus areas within the nursing program. And so our five focus areas are listed there, aging, um, nursing in indigenous communities, mental health nursing, rural health nursing, and women's health and gender. So within the program, you can choose electives and uh, clinical placements that sort of match up with those areas of interest. Or in your final two semesters, you could choose to do an undergraduate thesis uh, and be supervised by a faculty member, either in those areas or another area of your interest. Uh, as with the Trent experience, hopefully you've all experienced so far as Trent students, close connection with faculty, that is true about the nursing program as well. Um, although nursing is, it's a fairly large program, we take in about 200 students every year. Um, we still follow that same model of the larger lecture plus the small tutorial. Uh, plus, you are also in the Clinical Learning Simulation Center, now called the HUP. And in there, you are in smaller groups as well. And in that Clinical Learning Center, you're practicing your nursing skills. Uh, we have the simulation mannequins. We replicate the hospital setting, uh, the home environment. Uh, and we have some uh, maternal child replication as well, including the mannequin that gives birth. She gives birth in five minutes, not quite the way it really happens in the real world most of the time, but uh, it is pretty cool that um, the mannequin does give birth. Um, you will also have opportunities in our program to work with our many partner agencies. Um, so each year you will have a different clinical placement and you could work with a range of our partners uh, in first year, um, you be looking at retirement and long-term care. And then in upper years, you have more of your hospital type placements. And so we work well with the providers and institutions in Peterborough and the surrounding area. And so our students do connect with uh, placements up to an hour's drive of Peterborough. So Peterborough Regional Health Center, Lindsay Ross Memorial, 
uh, lakerage in Oshawa are some of the half field type things that take place um, out of town. We do offer you 1300 hours of clinical placement over the time in our program. That's a lot of hands-on learning starting in the winter semester of first year and then every semester after that. Of course, this year looks a little different with COVID, uh, but you will continue to get uh, simulation or I don't know if you saw the news about our virtual reality uh, opportunities we're offering our nursing students this year. Um, in the past, we have offered a health brigade to Honduras and Guatemala is another place. Um, that is considered your community placement in second year if you choose that option. And again, we'll see how things play out in terms of um, that opportunity in the future. One of the other things about our program is that you have a stay in your last two semesters with us. So you get to choose your final placement. Uh, in the first semester, it's called your pre-consolidating placement. You're one-on-one -on -one with a registered nurse and, and you are following their schedule. And you can have a say as to which institution or organization you're interested in being placed with. You also have a say into the type of placement. And so perhaps over the course of your studies, you fell in love with mental health or maybe you wanna be on a medical surgical floor you would complete a questionnaire indicating your preferences and then we do our best to get you those preferences whether it's an institution and you know you just want to be in a hot in a particular hospital it doesn't matter what type of placement or whether you're looking more specifically for um, a certain area to practice nursing in and of course as you can imagine most nursing students are thinking about where they want to work in those last two semesters and um, so the first one, the pre-consolidating stay within our clinical placement area, and that includes the greater Toronto area and east towards Kingston, uh, north up towards Algonquin. Uh, but in your final semester, if you've been a good student and there haven't been any issues in the clinical setting prior, you could go anywhere. So literally you could go on an international placement, you could go out of province, we had a couple of students go into Northern Ontario to work with Indigenous communities. So really that last one is um, the world is kind of your oyster in terms of where you'd like to be doing your final placement. And if you're not doing undergraduate research, um, you can, will do an advanced topic in nursing. Again, you have some choice in that advanced topic and those take place online. So. You're not at Trent in the last two semesters, you're out in the clinical setting and either doing a thesis or um, taking an online. Those are students also in those last two semesters think about maybe moving home um, or again to areas where they're thinking about working uh, after they were finished the program. So one of the things that we like to say about our graduates um, is that they're prepared to write the NCLEX exam. Um, those uh, pass rates are publicly available. Uh, Trent was above the median and our pass rates for 2018. I don't think we've seen the 2019 or I haven't seen the 2019 numbers yet, but we were ahead in our pass rates of some of the larger institutions like York. So we're very proud of that. And we work every year to um, ensure that our students are doing well on their NCLEX um, RN licensure exam. So once you've graduated from the program, you take out a membership with the College of Nurses of Ontario. We confirm that you've graduated and then that is how you go on to then write your registered nurse license exam to become a registered nurse in the province of Ontario. The other thing is that we are proud of the fact that we graduate practice ready nurses. So all that time in placement, the 1300 hours, um, we feel does get our students ready to go into practice after graduation um, in a variety of settings. And that we also graduate nursing students that are leaders in the healthcare that are really committed and interested in the clients and patients that they work with. 
and for advocating um, in many different areas, including policy uh, for improvements in the healthcare system. So as I mentioned, we offer the two programs at Trent, the four-year collaborative program and the two and a half year or 28 month compressed program stream. As an internal applicant, as a Trent student, you can apply to both streams um, if you're qualified. In those programs, even though it's compressed to two and a half year, you still are gonna follow this pattern of study. Um, so year one is just looking at the nursing profession. What does it mean to be a nurse and practicing your basic skills, uh, clinical placement in long-term care or uh, retirement residence. Um, and you'll also be studying um, about nursing to an elderly population. In year two, you'll be looking at the topics of nursing in families. You'll have a clinical placement in either mental health or maternal child health and also nursing in communities. And that is a more of a project-based type placement with one of our community agencies. And those can range anywhere from um, CAMH, the mental health, to going into schools and uh, working on projects, important projects for schools, teaching kids the importance of hand washing, which we all know is really important in these days of COVID. Um, those types of things um, are the projects in a variety of settings. And then in year three, it's more of your hospital type placements looking at acute illness and chronic illness. And then as I mentioned, fourth year, it's of your choosing um, that independent practice uh, with a registered nurse. So lots of opportunities to get experience in our program. So what are the admission requirements? Uh, for both streams, you need a background in English, biology, chemistry, and math. Um, depending on your year of study at Trent, um, you know, if you're a uh, first year or second year, if you completed first or second year, you will waive the English requirement. Um, it also depends on whether you're a domestic or an international student about meeting those English requirements. And then biology, chemistry, and math. And those can be met through grade 12 for you courses, college courses, or university courses at Trent. Um, and all the details are on the nursing website. So the specific grades that you need and the specifics about um, uh, you know, which courses we're looking for are all on the website. So I won't get into detail about that. Um, for the compressed program, you need introductory psychology, uh, psych 1020 and 1030, or two years of undergraduate study. Um, and um, if you're in first year and you're sort of the honor science student and maybe you're taking psych 1020 and 1030, you'll also need anatomy and physiology to be eligible for the compressed program. Um, so instead of having to meet the requirement for two years of undergraduate study, if you have those four specific courses, plus at least two more electives in first year, you'll be eligible for the compressed program. If you don't have the introductory psychology, maybe you chose um, a, a very different field at Trent, um, we can waive that for admission if you have upper year credits. So the compressed program has two electives at the third year. So if you're missing that introductory psychology, but you would have those third year elective uh, credits that could be transferred over, you would just take the, our intro to psych where other students might be taking those third year electives. So there is some flexibility even around introductory psychology. You need a minimum average of a 70%. That's calculated on your last, um, typically on your last two years or 10 full credits. But if you're in first year, fast tracking to compress, it would be on at least 4.0 transfer credits. It is competitive for nursing admissions. As you can imagine, it's a popular program. Uh, you are competing against internal and external candidates. So typically you need an average in the high 70s or better. So you wanna aim for that with your, with your studies. Um, you are also required to take the CASPER test. Uh, CASPER is a situational judgment test. So it's looking for um, personality traits suitable for the nursing profession. You don't have to know anything about nursing. It's not a test of nursing knowledge. It's a test about you. So you need to um, 
you'll be looking at um, situations, either uh, video or written situations. It is an online test, it's 90 minutes. And once you watch or read these situations, you are doing some short answer questions in a timed environment. Spelling and grammar do not count. You're just trying to get your thoughts out um, about that. And so successful completion of CASPER is one of the requirements uh, for admission as well. And we think it really helps to broaden the, the pool of applicants that get admitted to the nursing program, um, that it's not solely based on grades only, um, but that you do have those personality traits that would make you a great teacher nurse. So the deadline to apply is January 31st, 2021. Uh, the application form is currently on the MyTrent portal under the Academics tab. So you can apply anytime between now and January 31st. Uh, in terms of taking the CASPER test, you'd want to start your application uh, with the nursing program first, and then you can register for any of the CASPER test dates listed for Trent University. Uh, you'll see that on their website and um, you use your trend ID as an identifier when you take the test. If you previously applied to nursing, um, you do still have to take CASPER again this year. So CASPER tests are only valid for one application cycle. So you will be required to take it again. Uh, and then you can follow along with your application on the MyTrend portal. So just like when you first applied to Trent, you will still see the same information on the status of your application on the MyTrend portal. So just to recap, admission decisions are based on meeting the academic requirements, successful completion of the CASPER test, um, and then to let you know that offers are sent on a rolling basis. Typically we start around mid-March and they go out until around mid to the end of May, depending on the response rate. So applicants that are in current studies could receive a conditional offer of admission um, in, in mid-March and the condition would be, uh, you know, meeting the minimums by the time you finish your winter semester studies. Um, and if you don't make it in those first rounds, don't panic because there are typically seats left in May. And so we are then going to recalculate your averages based on your winter semester grades and look at sending out further offers. And so don't, as I said, don't panic if you don't hear from us right away in mid-March. Um, they do go out on a rolling basis. Oh, and it says, sorry, I should have deleted that. Um, don't check the OUAC website, check the MyTrent portal um, for the acceptance. Um, you will also be sent an email to your Trent email account um, with an offer and you will have a limited time to respond to that offer. So sorry about that mistake. Um, and then as I mentioned that, if you for some reason are taking summer courses or you're taking courses elsewhere in the summer, we do have to receive all your final transcripts by August 15th. Some people are also choose to upgrade. Maybe you don't have chemistry, and you're not going to jump into university chemistry. Maybe you're taking it at a high school to upgrade. We do need to have um, those types of transcripts in by August 15th of 2021. Um, just so just to let you know that part. Don't worry about your trend transcripts. I can see those. I can see any other transcripts you've previously submitted. It's just if you're taking something else somewhere else um, during this time that you would need to make sure you submit those transcripts as well. And even though you're at Trent, you're most welcome to come to the virtual fall open house that's happening. Um, the Dean and some faculty members and some students um, will be on talking about the program. So if you want to hear about the program from their perspective, please feel free to register for the virtual open house. It's a great time to, to ask those questions. It's about an hour long um, virtual presentation. So if you have an hour on that day, um, they will post the schedule shortly. Um, please feel free to join us. Uh, even though you're here at Trench, you're more, it's a new program, you might have questions about it. Feel free to jump in on that. Um, myself and others will be part of that presentation. And then if you have any other questions, 
feel free to contact me. The best way is to email nursinginitions at triton.ca. Uh, myself and a colleague answer those emails. Uh, my colleague's name is Lucy. Um, the thing about emailing nursing admissions as opposed to my personal email is that you will get a tracking number. Um, so you'll know for sure that we got your email and uh, you should get a response within a few days. It depends on when you email, as you can imagine, certain times are busier than others. Um, but that email, you'll just, you'll know for sure that uh, your email has been received. And then also check out trentu.ca slash nursing uh, for any other questions you may have about the program. And that's okay. it for me. Well, thank you so much. We do have some questions. Um, so the first question is, can you speak to the housing options for students in the nursing program? Yeah, so our nursing students um, choose housing just based on personal preference. There is a nursing living learning community in autonomy. I'm, I'm sorry, I should have checked to see what the status of that was for this year. Um, but uh, normally there is a living learning community uh, for up to 42 students in autonomy college. But honestly, our students uh, live on campus, you know, in first year, uh, if, they're, if they're brand new to Trent, but like so many others, they've moved off campus in other years. Um, if you sort of interested in that in terms of connecting with Trent students, there's a few ways you can do that with nursing students. There is the Trent Fleming Nursing Student Association, and they host many things um, for students, including in your first year, if you want to, you can be part of a nursing buddy program. So you will be paired in your first semester with an upper year nursing student. Um, it's totally voluntary, but um, just to go back to housing, our nursing students are really everywhere in any college, it's based on personal preference and budget. Perfect. That's great. Um, so we have another question um, about what financial aid supports there are um, for nursing students. Yeah, so uh, you know whether you're uh, eligible for um, scholarships or bursaries, um, if you look on the list under um, student finances under scholarships, you'll see that there are some in-course uh, bursaries and also some scholarships uh, listed there. And those awards are given out in different semesters. And then, of course, there's your typical um, other um, financing, you know, OSAP and other, other things that students access, just like all the other trans students. Awesome. And um, just one last question that we have is, um, do your students publish articles or papers? So I would guess that would refer back to the um, kind of thesis or large project you were mentioning. Yes. Um, so I'm not sure if any of them have published as a student. I believe um, there have been some of our graduate students, uh, student graduates, sorry, <laughs> that have published. Um, and you, if you want that information, um, feel free to contact the nursing department, nursing at trentu.ca. Um, they could provide you with that type of information um, about um, research that has been published by, by our nursing graduates. And perhaps if any of the undergraduates have actually had anything published. Perfect. Well, that's some great information I think you provided for people interested in, in the nursing program. So I just wanted to thank you again, um, just for taking the time out of your day to come kind of present that to the students in attendance. And um, thank you to the students for uh, taking the time to uh, listen about our nursing program. Um, and like Karen mentioned, we're lucky enough to have the nursing faculty a part of our Trent community. So um, there are plenty of ways to get in contact, like she mentioned. So for any other questions, um, yeah, I'm sure you can just go ahead and contact. Yes, and if you're not sure about who to ask your question to, start with us. And then if we're not the right ones, we are more than happy to pass your question along to the appropriate person, absolutely. And uh, just to say that the nursing um, faculty and staff are very approachable and uh, happy to answer your questions. Awesome. Well, that was perfectly filled our time. So thank you again. And yeah, thanks everyone for attending. Yes, thanks everyone. Have a great weekend. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.